May I come in, sir? Yes, please do. Good morning, sir. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Please take your seat. Thank you, sir. You are Mr. Gautam Singh. Yes, sir. Uh, Gautam, I presume that you are uh, vaccinated? Yes, sir. Fully vaccinated? Yes, sir. Since all board members are also vaccinated, I'll advise you to remove your mask. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Comfortable? Yes. So, can we start? Yes. Fine. Uh, Gautam, uh, please introduce yourself to board members. Sir, my name is Gautam Singh. I am from district Jalan, Uttar Pradesh. I have done my schooling from Senek School, Lucknow. And after that, I have completed my, my graduation from Northern India Institute of Technology, Lucknow. And presently, I am working on a digital platform as online tutor and also pursuing MA in psychology from IGNO. Sir, my interests are digital diary writing and uh, tracking developments in Indian cinema. So, Gautam, uh, you completed your graduation and uh, you are already 30 years old. Uh, you have this electrical and electronics um, engineering uh, in your pocket. Yes, but uh, you are basically a tutor right now. Yes. Sir. Why not uh, your core discipline of electric electrical and electronics engineering? Why are you not working? 30 years is too, I mean, too much. Sir, after doing my graduation, sir, I realized that I need to appear for civil service exam in order to hone my academic skills, I have been continuously engaging myself in studies as well as contributing to, towards the uh, teaching process. And since the time of COVID, sir, I switched over to digital platform and starting providing uh, digital uh, education through, through online services. But my question remains, why not the core industry of electrical and electronics engineering? Why are you not an engineer? Why are you a teacher? Nothing sir, wrong, nothing against teacher, but why not an, you're an engineer? Sir, as I wanted to contribute my full time to civil services preparation, I found it uh, better to give my part time to uh, teaching process as well as give greater time to preparation process. Um, I can see that uh, when you mention your um, uh, uh, family income and all, uh, you co you're coming from relatively a humble family, isn't it? Yes, sir. And uh, uh, you also belongs to your OBC category. Yes. Uh, since you studied uh, technical things, you'll be able to analyze. Tell me, isn't it un unfavorable in a sense to become an OBC for a poor rather than being an e economically weaker section? Had you been an EWS candidate, you might have gotten selected, isn't it? Despite the fact that you fall in that bracket, now you're being punished for being uh, uh, a backward caste person. You getting my question? Yes, sir. As far as my understanding goes, sir, Honorable Supreme Court in uh, Indra Swane case uh, emphasized that social backwardness has to be the prime backwardness. But keeping in view the present context and present times, economic back backwardness too need to be considered. So, economically weaker sections uh, too deserve a kind of... They deserve it and you belong section. to that category as well. Yes, but you are not getting that benefit, so you are being punished for being from the backward caste. Had you been an upper caste with the same uh, income bracket, you might have been got selected from, uh, by now. Sir, but uh, in case of OBC, sir, I have been given extra attempts which are not available for economically weaker sections. Sir. Anyways, uh, you are basically from uh, Uttar Pradesh, yes, right? And Uttar Pradesh government uh, uh, recently there was uh, this, this election and thereafter uh, so many celebration. It's uh, and there was all bulldozers everywhere. It appears that the UP government is taking pride uh, in something which should be a matter of uh, shame. What do you say, sir? As far as if if there are any illegal constructions, if there are encroachment on uh, public property, then bulldozer has to be used in order to remove it, sir. In that process, government has taken few actions in that regard, sir. So you believe that a government, rather than following the, the rule of law thing, having this bulldozers as a uh, intimidating, threatening gesture and, uh, and taking pride in it, there's nothing wrong in it. No, sir. It, uh, it 
it is a matter of concern in the in the aspect that it may be misinterpreted by section of people who are not well informed that ne that needs to be uh, but why there should be a celebration and uh, um, uh, that jingoism with the um, bulldozer so that has been highlighted with the, by the part of uh, some sections of people as being uh, trying to assert that uh, honorable cm is uh, more uh, decisive and he is uh, trying to improve the law and order situation in the uttar pradesh which has been deteriorated uh, in the last few decades fine thank you <coughs> sir gautam yes. you are coming from up right you just uh, discussing about the uh, or law and order type of thing right police reform is required for the good law and order in a state right what are the problems in up which you would like to rectify regarding police yes sir there is a greater need for modernization of police sir hmm in inclusion of sir forensic psychologist and there is a greater need for criminal psychologist hmm. not to further objectify the process sir hmm. there is greater degree of subjectivity which needs to be hmm. addressed Mm. and and apart from that sir technological interventions need to be mm. further improved sir mm. have you heard about the term smart policing yes sir it is also associated with the modernization of police yes sir what is it sir it refers to the sir use of greater use of uh, artificial intelligence machine learning internet mm. internet internet of things to mm. to uh, gather data and uh, come with a more predictive policing so that mm. we can uh, increase efficiency and effectiveness in the in the process of maintaining law and order sir mm. can you point out the uh, seven point reforms uh, as uh, given by supreme court yes sir in the in the casting case sir mm. honorable supreme Very court good. highlighted regarding uh, creation of uh, national police commission state mm. police commissions as well as mm. the appointment appointment of uh, dgp Hmm. needs to be done with greater greater uh, involvement of upsc and they need to be given minimum of 2 years term sir hmm. so that they can further continue with the reform process hmm. and do you believe that uh, uh, the patrolling and investigation should be separated yes sir this was also the recommendation regarding <laughs> sir, investigation and law and order needs to be sir, separated to okay. bring in more division of labor as well as uh, sir effectiveness and uh, precision in that policing process how can we restore rule of law rather than rule of bulldozer i mean how can we enforce the humanistic policing yes, throughout the country yes sir it is found that sir there is a deficit between sir police personnel and uh, common citizens sir that mm. needs to be uh, abridged sir through mm. greater participation greater involvement between Uh, leaders of police and community leaders hmm. and the police personnel as well as officials need to ensure that any kind of intimidation is not used with the public that would be, that would create a negative sentiment among the pu public sir okay very good gautam uh, your optional is psychology right yes what is memory and what is forgetting sir memory is the cognitive ability to encode store and uh, retrieve information sir hmm. and forgetting is what yes sir so forgetting occurs when uh, there is a loss of retrieval cues hmm. or it, there is a interference in the already learned information hmm. with a new newly learned information or vice versa sir oh, like fading overlapping yes sir uh, what is proactive inhibition Have so exactly i am not able to recall and what is retroactive inhibition if you may guess so retroactive comes into picture when uh, newly learned information in interferes with previously learned information sir okay can you tell me uh, something in brief uh, the psychoanalytic theory as propounded by sigmund freud yes sir sir psychoanalytic especially the utility part as uh, as per psychoanalyst view the behavior of a person is largely decided by his yeah. unresolved conflict and unfulfilled desires hmm. in this unconsciousness hmm. and its utility is uh, largely to to uh, relieve persons uh, inhibitions negative motives to bring a better personality hmm. to the process of free association dream analysis etc okay uh, hippocrates uh, classified four kind of uh, personality trait right 
that means sanguine kind of personality, melancholic, uh, phlegmatic, and choleric. Uh, our prime minister uh, comes from which classification? What is your opinion? Sir, Speak carefully. Okay, sir. Sir, exactly it will be difficult to categorize for me <laughs> right now, sir. But I'll try it, sir. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Sir, please, sir, can you mention the first two, sir? I'm forgetting, sir. Uh, sanguine. Yes. Sanguine is the first okay, one. Sir. Hmm. Yes, sir. He's largely a sanguine person. See, because he often uh, engages with the student and uh, creates positive energy among the people to, hmm. uh, to overcome Why you are stress? so obsessed to the government? You are looking so obsessed to the government of India. Sir, uh, as a personality, sir, uh, I found him uh, as a sanguine person. Hmm. Thank you. Uh, Gautam. Yes. Uh, you come from Ahir community. Yes, and uh, recently there was a huge protest in Delhi NCR demanding uh, Ahir regiment. What is this Ahir regiment issue? Sir, recently demand has uh, come regarding Ahir regiment because uh, Ahir community has contributed immensely in the armed forces, especially in 1962 China war. As a result, sir, there is a greater demand for Ahir community, uh, for regiment. But sir, I think that going by the modern, uh, modern uh, democratic uh, values, Caste should not be propped up as a further categorization, especially in defense forces, sir. Okay, so you don't agree with this demand? Yes, sir. I would, I would rather uh, prefer that uh, reinforcing the uh, reinforcing the Ahir community through memorial, establishing memorial, or okay. uh, respecting but, their. Uh, but uh, the proponents of this demand they cite that uh, various caste-based uh, regiments exist in Indian Army. So, what is wrong if another one is added and when it is a community which has uh, actually uh, contributed a lot? Yes, sir. But uh, those regiments which are existing, they were mainly a colonial creation. And now we have uh, entered into a modern world, sir, that, that becomes slight irrelevant to give a new status. Those which are so already Indians, would, they would So, give would you support a call for dismantling of those regiments as well? which are having a colonial legacy and which uh, emphasize the uh, caste identity? Yes, sir. In a phased manner, sir, that can be done so that uh, on one hand, government or defense forces does not uh, antagonize with the larger section of people who are represented there. But in the future, okay, we Gautam, uh, you have psychology as your optional. Yes, sir. So, uh, right now we have this Ukraine crisis. And if I have to take a stand that Ukraine is responsible for what is happening to Ukraine, you understand my point? If I take that stand, uh, with which concept of psychology can you relate this? What am I doing? Sir, you are, you are engaging in an attribution process, sir. And I am blaming the victim. As a victim blaming right? the yes, So, uh, what uh, uh, like uh, as per or uh, based on your knowledge of psychology, why, why it is not right for me to blame the victim? Sir, uh, you, are, you need to further gather the information. Sir, attribution process uh, often sometimes are based on prejudices, stereotypes. It may be, sir, your uh, uh, prejudices regarding a certain country or limited information regarding that uh, country. So, That's why, sir, you are blaming the victim is never uh, the right approach, yes, sir. right? Yes. Okay. Uh, what is Zimbardo's contribution to psychology? Yes, sir. Uh, Philip Zimbardo uh, uh, conducted a very controversial uh, experiment in uh, Stanford prison, which later led to the… Uh, a particular uh, term has come out from that study. What term yes, is sir. that? Sir, it was… Uh, sir, I need sir, time to recall, sir. I'll give you the term de-individuation. Yes, sir. What is the meaning of that? I said de-individuation. It, it means, sir, sir, once uh, we become part of greater group, sir, we lose our own identity and acquire the identity of a particular group. In his experiment, sir, for instance, 
inmates who were classified in inmates acquired the qualities of inmates and those who were assigned the responsibilities of guard acquired the, the qualities of guards right and how it is harmful yes sir it was an unethical experiment and uh, it has been uh, acknowledged by famous psychologists all over the world that uh, it created a sense of fear among the the participants who uh, got in that research okay uh, my final question to you india started with a policy of non alignment and now it has moved to multi alignment what is the difference between the two very briefly if you can tell me so non alignment was in the context of uh, bipolar world at at that time india was also a emerging economy but today india has uh, india is trying to become a global leader in that that aspect we need to uh, contribute uh, we need to collaborate with different uh, organizations in different countries across the world so sir multi alignment is uh, need of the r and can non alignment and multi alignment go together or like uh, it is exactly opposite of each other sir to an extent they are on the same page sir okay thank you sir gautam let's assume for a while that you are a dm now and uh, tehsildar seeks a personal audience with you he comes to your office and says sir i belong to scheduled caste community and i have been discriminated not in a direct manner but indirect manner nobody is partaking food with me using alderfer's erg theory of motivation how do you motivate him sir adler's theory of erg sir i am particularly not uh, aware about okay wherein he okay. talks about existence relatedness growth fair enough if not alderfer can you use any theory of motivation in psychology to motivate him what would you tell him in sir uh, motivation theories of psychology particularly of uh, maslow Mm -hmm. there is uh, there is a hierarchy need uh, provided there sir mm. so as a person feels that he is being discriminated he is not feeling it is empirical that he is being discriminated there is no feeling here okay sir if there are uh, empirical evidences sir mm. first uh, i would ensure that uh, the people who are uh, responsible th for this act mm -hmm. would be would be a, a, i would have conversation with them get mm -hmm. further information that why such behavior is uh, coming among those people okay and uh, i will try to try to uh, re reappraise them so their appraisal has to be changed and they need to further sensitize regarding the issues and uh, the person who the tehsildar who has come to me and i will use the theories of uh, motivation of maslow to to cater to his needs of social recognition in the organization sir. okay okay now gautam glass ceiling effect it's a very interesting theory in psychology uh, how do you use this particular theory in analyzing the situation of let's say transgenders yeah glass ceiling effect what do you mean by that and how do you use it for analyzing transgenders yeah so glass ceiling effect refers to creation of invisible barrier in the progress of uh, in the career progression you need to stop there what do you mean by invisible so it is a psychological barrier mm -hmm. which uh, interrupts persons or individuals progress to a higher ranks in an organization and as far as transgen transgender are concerned because of a continued historic uh, stigma which they have faced in the society mm -hmm. and their limited social and uh, social capital and cultural capital they find it very difficult to reach to the higher echelons of uh, in various administrative or in uh, private jobs so so that needs to be addressed sir all right a uh, few years back uh, dosa economics right it was in news do you think it is relevant today and what is dosa economics after dosa came thali uh, possibly upma as well that would work your appetite i believe but anyways so what is dosa economics sir uh, food articles have been a uh, one of the parameters to judge the economic scenario as well as uh, the rate of various articles uh, in an economy by that yardstick sir judging uh, 
parameters on the basis of dosha would, would be considered as dosha economy and going by thali the price of thali would be considered as thalinomics but sir we need to also take into other parameters into consideration to come at a broader picture sir so this dosha economics is it catered in core inflation or headline inflation sorry sir exactly sir i am not aware that's okay last question can you name uh, any fundamental duty any one fundamental duty which is legally enforceable any one sir i need sir time to please please so to uh, preserve the uh, preserve uh, constitutional values as well as respect uh, its ideal and institutions and flag of india sir flag of india yes, all right is there any law which prohibits insult of flag of india in any manner yes, or form there is a there is a act which is known as insult to national honors act sir if i am not i am not able to recall it exactly sir but it's related to this sir. thank you thank okay sir. thank you sir gautam yes, uh you belong to electronics background uh in your graduation recently government of india had amended uh, electronic waste management policy some few years back and it broadened the concept of extended producer responsibility can you tell me what is that yes ma'am uh, extended re producer responsibility is refers to the, the responsibility of producer to give push to uh, recycling of the products in that uh, process uh, the products which are being sold it's uh, once they get uh, that their utility is reduced they are submitted to the 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 agency which is uh, which has sold it sir yeah. okay as you know that most of the electronic waste in india is handled by the unorganized sector and moreover public is also not responsible enough to you know actually give back their used handsets or electronic items back to the producer and it's a cumbersome process also how do you think the producers are going to go about this epr what is the way what is the option left to them um, producers need to uh, further uh, further formalize the process of collection of uh, the recycled product can producers actually formalize the entire unorganized industry no ma'am that uh, that they cannot do ma'am then how ma would they do yes, it sir so, ma'am uh, they can Uh, exactly, I am not able to. Read. Don't you think government has actually shrugged its responsibility towards producers? Something which government should be doing. It simply made an act and made producers responsible to maintain the entire cycle. By putting responsibility on producers, uh, government is trying to bring in further efficiency and further further effectiveness uh, in the process of uh, recollection. Okay. Anyway, have you heard about hybrid immunity? No, I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm not able to recall. Breakthrough infection. I'm sorry, ma'am. Lithium dependency. Yes, ma'am. Okay, tell me about it. Ma'am, as lithium are, dependency of India. Yes, ma'am. There, as there is a greater greater encouragement for electronic vehicles, and lithium being a import important ingredient in the battery storage. So, as India does not have enough resources of lithium. so we need to import it uh, from south american countries like bolivia man only south american countries aren't we importing it from some of our neighbors i'm not uh, exactly aware about them like okay and what are the challenges that india is facing in uh, meeting its import demand ma'am in the wake of covid-19 as supply chain uh, has uh, been disrupted that was just once Occur yes, once in a while occurrence. Otherwise, what are the challenges India is facing? Um, it being a strategic metal, as uh, each of the country is trying to uh, trying to further their electronic uh, vehicle revolution, so that is creating a supply constraint to an extent, ma'am. that's exactly what i'm asking yes, what are the issues that india is facing what are the challenges that it is not able to meet the uh, demand which has been generated because of electric vehicles 
in the backdrop of covid there is a sudden rise in the demand okay anyway food. let's leave that uh, government in its uh, green fuel policy has recently given impetus to hydrogen can you tell me in this respect uh, what is gray hydrogen what is blue hydrogen what is green hydrogen green hydrogen is one which is produced with the help of renewable energy okay and maybe exactly i am not aware about the, all the other those mem aspects okay. brown and okay thank you gautam okay gautam yes sir gautam you have mentioned that you track the development in indian cinema yes sir can you just surprise board members what exactly is the difference between the 35 mm the 70 mm and the eastman color so these are the width of uh, the film roll the silver iodide film roll which is being which was used for for capturing the film sir so how can the width be eastman what does eastman color means here so eastman color sir i am not aware about sir okay so you were only uh, differentiating between the 35 and the 70 mm sir okay so if the 35 mm is the width and the 70 mm is the width which one is going to be better and why So 70 mm provides a better, uh, better or greater resolution as well as uh, it can uh, assist in a greater, greater co coverage of the film, sir. Why would it? You studied science, right? Yes, sir. So why would it be uh, uh, resulting in uh, better resolution? Yes, sir. As the size uh, of the film increases, the greater amount of light can enter the silver iodide film, and greater amount of images can be captured, sir. since you develop you are into the technical aspect itself if you look at the recent film kashmir files which was in news forget the content part the people who watch movie says it's a badly made movie technically speaking now tell me why is it being said so exactly sir i have not not watched the film yet sir okay you have not watched the film and we have not studied the review either sir i have studied the review sir so in the review if we leave the content part content is being discussed but if every uh, movie uh, watcher has said that it is a badly made, made movie in terms of the technical aspects uh, why is it being said like that? you never uh, went through that sir as far as the reviews are concerned sir they have uh, delved upon the uh, regarding its uh, largely its content sir they have not uh, revealed about technology sir so i am i have to watch the film sir then only i can give some concrete reviews fine uh, fair enough Uh, you uh, you must have must be watching closely the economic uh, uh, things that's been happening in the neighboring country of uh, sri lanka yes uh, right uh, tell me what 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 what, is, what has resulted into sri lanka in, in being in such a situation was it bad economics or bad politics sir i would consider it as a combination of both sir as far as economics part is concerned sir as because of the covid 19 the tourism industry has been badly affected and especially the easter attacks which were taken place uh, they have further reduced the scope of uh, tourism in the country and uh, and the political aspect is concerned sir that the policy regarding its uh, debt de trap diplomacy which in which uh, sri lanka has been trapped sir because of that economic crisis sir i think okay and uh, why it is uh, really bad for india to have uh, a failing state uh, across the border now we have almost two failing states in terms of pakistan and uh, sri lanka across the border yes sir as uh, our neighbors neighboring countries are closely related with our cultural as well as our uh, our geographical aspects as as in sri lanka sir there are a large section of tamil people residing there any form of uh, sir economic distress would result into sir larger migration of uh, tamils in the in the united states of tamil nadu sir that would be the aspect of concern sir Fine, fine. Nice talking to you. Your interview is over. You can go now. Thank you, sir. So, Gautam, uh, is it going to be your first uh, interview? Yes, sir. Uh, at the UPSC. Yes, sir. You have given certain state interviews or not? No, sir. No. Uh, tell me, uh, you are happy with your performance, or you believe there are areas you can uh, do a little better? You still have two days. Yes, sir. sir i believe the sir in sir, certain questions sir i will okay yes sir in some questions sir i could not uh, answer well sir 
I, it's, it, it, was it to, um, uh, with regard to your content or you believe that uh, communication was an issue? Sir, also content, sir. There's may I ask, uh, asked regarding uh, EV and EV and the lithium aspects. There, I believe that uh, obviously content was an issue, but it was getting cyclic. Yes, You're sir. getting so uh, I'll advise, and it, it was there uh, at one more place that uh, try and avoid uh, repeating the same Oops. argument because what will happen then the board member yes, will sir. get may not necessarily irritated, but then you'll be losing time yes. one, and obviously the board members will have okay, he is repeating the thing, so he is not able to think uh, uh, fresh. Since you have your interview just two days after, I mean there there, there isn't much uh, time, so I'll not be giving you detailed uh, um, uh, uh, feedback with regard to the content that will require time. So forget about it. Otherwise, you carry wonderful personality. Your uh, your entry in general is good. Sitting posture is good. I'll come to the voice communication in a while, but uh, uh, your hand movement is restricted and your uh, uh, flow is well. Uh, about the voice uh, level thing, in general, you're clearly audible. But at a few places, what happens when you're finishing your sentences? You your speed goes a little high, and then the words go over one another. Yes, so it becomes yes. and uh, not really a voice clarity issue, but uh, 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 it, it your communication will improve if you f speak the whole word. Yes, sir, and then finish the, it. Uh, take yes. it to the end of the sentence. Okay, sir. if you are able to do it, it will be good. Eye contact uh, in the during the course of interview, it was good, but in the beginning when we were having the basic uh, conversation, especially the introduction and all, there probably you, you were. Uh, either uh, advised or otherwise, uh, you were having that uh, very uh, yes, rotating sir. eye contact kind of a thing. See, looking in the in the beginning, looking at all members, uh, maybe once or twice is not bad, but not beyond. That. Okay. Uh, primarily, when the conversation is there, make sure that you are having that one-to-one -one conversation because, as I said, the trust building yes, is an um, uh, is a function of uh, eye contact. So uh, keep that. Thing. Uh, on the other communication aspect, non-verbal communication um, at a few places, it appears the facial expression as in response to the question asked are not necessarily that formal. For example, when this bulldozer was being discussed, there was this uh, facial expression uh, now which uh, probably could have been avoided. It's a very high level position when you're uh, aspiring to. So there you cannot uh, get away with becoming informal. Uh, no, not a good idea, right? So you, uh, keep the facial, facial expression as formal as possible yes. and in sync with what you are thinking or saying, right? Yes. That yes. will be so good. Can I note down? Uh, you can. Okay, sir. There are a couple of more uh, uh, small things. One is uh, you were not at home when you were discussing psychology. I'm not saying revise psychology. You don't have that kind of a time, but it is your optional paper. So uh, appear uh, to be at home, relaxed when you're discussing psychology. If you don't know a particular thing, simply say sorry. It doesn't matter because okay, uh, obviously but psychology is already tested. That's why you're here. So don't worry about it. But uh, you shouldn't look uneasy yes. uh, when your discipline is being discussed. This is one suggestion. Last one, when you brought in that Tamil ethnicity thing, uh, that's a sensitivity question. And uh, your answer was complete even without mentioning that Tamil ethnicity. Because that will may open another yes, uh, front yes, and uh, uh, not a good idea to get into, right? I mean, the, 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 the talking about uh, refugees and the economic burden of it and the and that analysis would have been so. Words should have been avoided, sir. That word. It, it was an avoidable okay, mention. Uh, this is what my understanding is. Other things, I'm not getting into the content thing. Just be confident. You're ready. Don't worry about it. Keep smiling. Uh, you'll do very good, right? Mm -hmm. All the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Sir.